quite absurd to treat a man like Dougal Lachlan as though he were a common criminal. It's a pity they arrested him on a Friday. Oh, why? Well, because he had to spend the weekend behind bars. So if it had been any other day, you could have got him released straight away? Yes, I could have applied for immediate bail. You are quite sure that Dougal will get bail? Oh, quite certain. Attempted murder is a very serious charge, but well, under the circumstances, I can see no reason for refusing the application. It's chilling just to hear you say that. Dougal Lachlan and attempted murder, the two just don't go together. I hope to persuade the court that that fact is self-evident. You're going to be defending him. Does the thought fill you with such alarm? <laughs> no, I, I just thought it was such a serious charge you would have to have an advocate. I've no doubt the charge will be reduced before it comes to trial. Probably to assault, in which case it'll be heard in a sheriff court and I can take the defence. Well, that's something anyway. But let's move one step at a time. Our first priority must be to have him released. Naturally, if there are any problems about finding the money for his bail, the estate will take care of it. Thoughtful, Elizabeth, but hardly necessary. I, I don't anticipate any problems. Aren't you being rather complacent about what you yourself described as a serious charge? Oh, calm, not complacent. They don't exactly put a, a price ticket on it in that way. I mean, if there was any real suspicion that he'd abscond, they wouldn't release him at all. Yes, but if it does go to trial, what happens if the court is impervious to your eloquence? If he's found guilty. Yes. That's hard to say. Best case, stiff fine. Worst case, a year, possibly two, in jail. And you aren't being complacent. Which do you think the more likely? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. When the time comes, I shall advise Dougal to take a toothbrush and pyjamas when he goes. You sound pretty certain that he's going to be convicted. Well... It's a pity that Bob Taylor can't just say that he saw the gun being pointed. In the trade, we call that perjury. Yes, but surely if someone saw the poacher point the if gun... If half the population of Glendarroch saw it, it still does not prove that he intended to use it, or that Dougal thought he did. I'm sorry, but I have to say it. The law is an ass. Is it? Well, you and Fiona have been known to carry guns, is that not so? Well, for sporting purposes... And does that entitle someone to shoot you? I didn't even think to give him a change of socks with him before they took him away. Oh, that such a thing should happen, Morag. I just don't know... Well, look, it'll be all right. Wait and see. Yes, but what will I do if they, if they send him away? They wouldn't do that. And nobody can blame Dougal for what he did. He might even have saved Bob Taylor's life. Oh, they should think he's a hero, so they should. Well, maybe the folk round about here would see it like that. But it'll be strangers sitting on that jury, and they don't know Dougal. I had a talk with Mr. Carradine. I'm very much afraid, Morag. He, he didn't sound very optimistic. What's he been saying to upset you? Oh, he was very nice and gentle, but he had to tell me the truth. Nobody can prove that the poacher was going to shoot Bob. Then why would he be pointing a gun at him? Well, nobody saw him do it except Dougal. Mr. Carradine said I'd be best to start making arrangements. Well, if you're worried about who'll look after the croft... Well, if the worst comes to the worst, there's me in Inverdarach. And there's Hamish McNeil. We'll all keep the place going for you. Yes, but you've all got places of your own to run. But it won't be for long. And I'm sure Alice will be glad to look after Wee Donald again. Yes, I know that. What you're saying is true. But that won't help Dougal, not in himself. Oh, I know he can be a terrible man. Do you know, the only time we've ever been separated, for any length of time, that is, was when I had to go into hospital. Oh, well, if it comes to it, it'll be very hard on you. Aye, but we'll make sure you're not short of company. It's at times like this that good neighbours are a real blessing. Oh, I'm sorry I'm a bit late, Isabel. Oh, no, that's all right, Alice. I managed to cope with the morning commuter rush on my own. <laughs> oh, 
You'll have been up by then. Yeah, I looked in at the croft to help Mrs. Larkland get Donald off to school. She must be fair worried about Dougal. Oh, she is. Though, as you might imagine, she's putting a brave face on it. Ah, well, you've got to, haven't you? I, is it all right if I leave a wee bit earlier? I want to be there, you know, when Donald gets back from school. Ah, of course, don't you bother about that, Alice. <laughs> Brian will be back soon. Oh, where's he gone? He's away to Ochtarn to collect John Mr. Thompson <gasps> off the train. Oh. <laughs> to tell you the truth, Alice, I could well be doing without him. Well, it'll always be a bit of extra cash. Oh, that's part of it. I mean, we've never taken in visitors. It just seems unnatural to charge somebody for staying under your roof. Well, it's never bothered Mrs. Woods. She charges six fifty a day for her paying guests. Oh, I wouldn't like to ask that much. Uh, well, knowing you, you'll probably finish up paying him. <laughs> Mind you, I suppose I wouldn't have been so sensitive about it if he'd come while yon mobile shop was taking away all our trade. I'd have been real glad of the money mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, uh... hey, in you go, Mr. Thompson. Fine. You know my wife, of course. Oh, yeah, hello. Oh, and that is uh, Alice Taylor. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Thompson, Frank Thompson. <laughs> Uh, it really is very good of you to have me like this, Mrs. Blair. Oh, our pleasure, I'm sure. I'll try to be as little trouble as I can. And uh, I won't be under your feet all day because I intend to spend a lot of time on my own. Oh, and how's that, Mr. Thompson? Well, I love walking, so I'll be out most of the day. Well, if the weather is halfway decent, there's plenty of walking to be had. In fact, in a quiet wee place like Lendarach, there's not much else to be had. <laughs> well, you won't hear me complaining about the quiet. And uh, being a bachelor, I'm quite used to looking after myself. Right, well, if you'd like to come through, I'll show you your room. You right. can have a wee cup of tea in a scone once you're settled, Mr. Thompson. Well, that'll be grand. Ah, he seems civil enough, isn't he? Oh, I'm sure he's very nice. I just hate the idea of anybody else being in Jimmy's room. Really brings it home to me that he's gone. Morning, Archibald. Just Archie, you can forget the ball bit. I'll try. Uh, dare I ask how your uh, rabbit's foot got on on Saturday? Don't bother. I uh, gather you're not on your way to your first million. <laughs> your horse not win then? It didn't even finish, it fell. Maybe it went down with housemaid's knee. Oh, we're very sharp this morning, aren't we? Well, Archie, now, has it crossed your mind that Thumper might not approve of gambling? That's not the point, Mona. Look, it's a well-known fact that rabbits' feet are lucky. Ugh, get that mangy thing away from me. Shh, you'll upset him. Oh, faced facts, Archie. It hasn't brought you any luck. And since you found it, a lot of other people have had bad luck. Like who? Like Dougal Lachlan. That thing's a jinx. Hold on, hold on. How can you be so negative about it bringing good luck and so positive about it bringing bad luck? On the basis of evidence. What evidence? Well, I haven't seen it bring any good luck and there's been a lot of bad luck around that evidence. Thank you, Miss Marvels. What bad luck has it brought you? Well, for one thing, I don't think I've ever made so many typing errors in my life. And I've never heard such rubbish in my life. Oh, no. What? Glenn Raddock. Glenn... <laughs> Get that thing out of my office. Oh, is, uh, is he all right? He's fine, fine, just settling in. Quite happy with the room. Look, I told you he's fine. And uh, seven quid a day is fine, too. Brian, you never asked him for that. No, he offered. Oh, I'd be ashamed to look him in the face. Oh. I mean, it's a nice enough room, but we're hardly the Ritz. Now, you told him if there was anything at all he wanted, he only had to ask. Yes, I told him, I told him. We should stop behaving like a defective fan heater. What do you mean? Well, you blow cold one minute, hot the next. First, you don't want him to come here, and then you're worried in case he's unhappy with his room. Well, that's only natural. Is it? If I felt the way you did, it'd be the cold shoulder and damp sheets. Look, I didn't want him to come, but it isn't his fault that he's here. Oh, so that's, that must make it my fault. Didn't say that. No, you don't have to. But since he is here, I have an obligation oh, to make hey, him as comfortable. Oh, excuse me, I hope I'm not uh, bothering you, but uh, I wonder if you could help me. Certainly, Mr. Thompson. Is there something wrong with the room? Oh, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's just great. Uh, no, I, I thought I'd go for a walk up to the bottom of Ben Darek, but I can't find a right of way on the map. <laughs> oh, no, 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 there's plenty. But the uh, easiest thing to do is to go up to the end of the village and you'll see a, a wee stile on the left. 
Just go over that. It's private property, but they don't mind if you don't do any damage. And you'll find a track that leads right up to the bed. But uh, it's a guy long walk, you know, for somebody that's been ill. Well, I'm not going to climb the bed, Mrs. Blair. I can always turn back if I feel tired. And listen, you can't go out dressed like that. You know, there's a raw wind today. Have you not got a, a scarf? Uh, I'm afraid not, no. Well, Brian will lend you one. You see and wrap up warm. Ah, uh, there's one hanging behind the door there. Oh, that's very good of you. So, uh, that's uh, just up the street and over the stile there. I think I've got that. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you now. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Dear, hope he doesn't overdo it. Oh, dash it, I forgot to give him his cup of tea. You know, it's good to see you like this again. Like what? The way you used to be. More concerned about other folk than yourself. I'll try to take that as a compliment. So, I'm off to Glasgow in the morning. I'll miss you. I'd feel slightly hurt if you didn't. But you needn't miss me for long. Oh? You're going to be back soon? No. Except maybe for a day or so. But I did rather think that you might come to Glasgow. For a weekend, perhaps. Let me think about it. Rory, you must know all about Solly Watson's business affairs. Yes, of course. My father looked after them before he passed them on to me. I understand he's going through a bit of a rough patch at the moment. What makes you say that? Oh, it's common knowledge in the village. Well, no, I can't comment one way or the other. Sorry is a client. Yes, of course. Professional ethics. I am, however, prepared to discuss your business affairs. <laughs> what on earth would you want to talk about them for? Curiosity. Professional curiosity. All right. I have uh, a small private income left to me by my grandmother. It's quite reasonable, but uh, not enough to attract a fortune hunter. Pity. In that case, I shall just have to love you for yourself alone. Oh, hello there, Major. Here, are you all right? Fine, thanks. Just winded a bit. Thought I'd have a shot at climbing old Ben Dara. Now, why would you want to do that? <laughs> There's an answer to that. What mountaineer gave it? Was it Mallory? Oh. Couldn't have been Mallory. No, Mallory's still up there in the eternal snows of Everest. The snows. But he made it. Important thing to make it. The challenge, you see. Why did I want to climb it? <laughs> because it's there, old chap. As good a reason as any. Well, by going up the north side, you're doing it the hard way. Why don't you try the east shoulder route? It's a stiffish climb, but you'd get there. I know. I know. Not much more than a hill walk, really. Dare say you could do it on a motorbike. Ah, it's been known. Yeah. Yes, I could have gone that way, but... Wouldn't have been much of an achievement, would it? <laughs> Now, don't worry. You know I'll testify to Dougal's total worth. That'll be nice. And if it comes to a fine, the estate will pay it. I was talking to some of the farmers and the estate workers. They said they'd have a whip round if it comes to a fine. That's very heartening, but I really feel the estate should accept the responsibility. That's no more than fair. Dougal was attending to estate business when, when the unfortunate incident occurred. That would be very good of you, Mrs. Cunningham. Now, 
are you going to be staying in Glendarroch for much longer? I really don't know. Seeing you again has made me aware of what I've been missing so badly and of the responsibilities I've been neglecting. Mr. Thompson, what on earth? Well, I just think I overdid things. Oh, a little. Oh, come on. Yes, Sit yourself you down for a minute. Yes, oh, Brian, Brian, could you come through, please? Right. What's up? Oh, it's Mr. Thompson. He's been taken by. Oh, I'm just finding it hard to get my breath. I'll call a doctor. No, there's, there's no need. I'll be fine in a minute. You know, I thought you might be taking too much out of yourself with that long walk. Brian, you should have stopped him. Me? How, how was that? And Mr. Thompson, you should have known better now. You come up here to recuperate. First thing you do is get yourself overtired. Uh, I think I'm all right now, Mrs. Blair. I, I, I just need a rest. I'll be fine. I'm not so sure. You better come through to the living room. It's warmer in there. I can make you that cup of tea. You see, it's deceptive. Well, he's in a right state, isn't he? Ah, uh, so is she. You know, whatever Isabel said about Thompson coming here in the first place, it's the best thing that could have happened. She's got somebody to mother again. Oh. Uh, are you looking for somebody, Craig? Uh, who was that that just came in here? Uh, I thought I recognised him. So you should. His name's Thompson, remember? The man from the DHSS who gave you so much trouble a while back. I knew it. I meant he gave you some bother as well. Well, what's he doing here? <laughs> He's our guest. Our paying guest. You must be daft to take him in. He's bad news. But that's your problem. Um, Mr. Craig, you wouldn't by any chance have it in mind to buy anything, would you? Uh, no, I don't need anything. I just heard about Dougal, and I was wondering what was what. Now, well, you're late in catching up with the news. Well, I've been up at Letter Fallock all weekend. Yeah, no, I dare say anybody at Letter Fallock could be pleased that Dougal's in trouble. <laughs> no, 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 you're wrong there. I have nothing against Dougal, nothing personal. I was just hoping the poacher he shot was one of the two that we caught up at Letter Fallock. All right. What were they like? Well, a couple of real hard men. Mind you, I know someday they won't be sorry to see Dougal in trouble. Snedden. Right first time. Well, that does it. That really does it. Does what? And to whom? That flaming rabbit's foot. I'm going to get rid of it. Oh, don't be too hasty, Archie. Are you sure you don't want to lose some money on the dogs first? No, you are right, Lorna. The thing is a jinx. Surprise, surprise. What made you change your mind? This letter from the wife. Well, she isn't ill, is she? Quite the reverse. She's had a row with her sister and she's thinking about coming back to Glendarroch. Well, that settles it. I'm going to chuck this mangy thing away. Do you think that's wise? I don't see why, no. Well, I've uh, often read about people, well, just like yourself, who have a charm uh, that brings them bad luck. And the bad luck can only be ended by persuading somebody else to take it. Is that a fact? Mm. You mean that Thumper here might be a good luck charm for somebody else? Mm. But maybe I'm just new his type. Quite possibly. Let's see. Well, then, uh, if you were to take him. Archie, I'm only going to say this once. No. <sighs> oh, what a rush. There was no need. <laughs> Donald's not back yet. Yeah, it's just the same. I'll have to leave earlier tomorrow. It's awful good of you to be doing all this, Alice. Oh, I'd do anything for you and Donald. Well, you might have to do quite a bit. You know that Dougal might get a prison sentence. Ah, I know. Well, that could create quite a lot of problems. I mean, I couldn't possibly look after Donald. No, no, you couldn't. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Eh? Oh, but I think we should cross it now. When Dougal gets home, I'm going to ask him to let Donald go back up to you. Oh, no, don't. Why not? Well... He just thinks that we're taking advantage of the trouble he's in. Alice, what Dougal thinks isn't important. Donald's welfare is. Yes, I know, but that isn't the only reason. I couldn't bear to have Donald back at the cottage, knowing that he was only going to be taken away from me again. Oh, Alice. A uh, lot of the fencing needs renewing, Mr. Snedden. Well, you better get on with it, then. You know where the wire's kept. Aye, sure, I'll see to it. I don't suppose you've heard about Dougal Lachlan. 
No. I haven't heard anything about the Egypt. But if anything has happened to him, I hope it isn't something too trivial. No, it isn't. He shot a poacher, and he's been charged with attempted murder. You're kidding. That's true. Well, this story is that a poacher had a 303 rifle trained in Bob Taylor, but they can't find the rifle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best laugh I've had in a long time. <laughs> Aye. I wonder if it was one of the two that we caught up at Letter Fellow. Aye. Maybe they took my advice. Now, they had guns. Maybe I should mention it to Sergeant Murray. You'll mention it to nobody. Not if you like working on Letter Fallock. Are you sure they really want us chatting a lot? Professor, I feel slightly awkward. But it seems strange for us to be going out to dinner with you and Rory on your last night together. Oh, don't worry, Mum. Rory simply wants to thank you in some small way for the hospitality you've shown him. What a considerate young man. Bobby, we'll be equally considerate. We'll leave as soon as the meal's over. I agree entirely. Mustn't have gooseberries for dessert. <laughs> yes, well, I can't say your tact won't be appreciated. <sighs> Wish I'd brought another dress from Edinburgh. Oh, nonsense, Lizzie. That looks charming. Tip top. Need a little something. I know my diamond brooch. I think I'll wear that for the occasion. I thought you took that with you. No, I didn't. I must remember to take it with me this time. You feeling better now? Oh, much better, thanks. That sort of thing happens occasionally. Damn nuisance. I've got a plate in my head, you see, and it affects my memory. Damned annoying. <laughs> you know, I, I told uh, Mingis that I'd been wounded in the Ardennes. Absolute rot. We were in reserve there. But I get a bit confused. I thought you said you were still in the army after the war. Yes, I got the head wound in Korea. Oh, I see. So if I appear a bit woolly at times, perhaps you'll understand why. Yes. Mm. Gone. My diamond brooch isn't in the drawer. Are you sure that's where you left it? The lock's been forced. Mm.